Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. Throughout my series on YouTube, I show quite a lot of interesting tutorials to help make your game using the plugin of Narrative. But there's lots of little things that pop up that often can't really be a tutorial on their own because they're too small. So I have compiled a list of the most common narrative questions. And in this video, in no particular order, we're going to go through them. So let's get started. So one of the most common ones is when you run up to somebody and start dialogue, it just immediately pastes the text on the page. And people don't want that, instead they want a typewriter style effect, where it pastes each individual letter on the screen, paired with the sound of a typewriter or anything else like that. Now there are many plugins on the marketplace that can do this, and they will have a lot more features. But in this first point I'm going to show you how to achieve this effect really basically, or I'll also point you in the right direction of where to add the plugin in. So the first thing you need to do is you need to find your narrative default UI. So the way you can find this is you can press Ctrl slash Command P to search and then at the side you'll see the cog. If you just click that and make sure plugin and engine content is visible, you can then search for default narrative UI and you'll see it pop up right at the top. So if you jump inside here and go to the graph and then find dialogue, if you can't find it, it'll be down the side of the graphs. These are all the events that control the UI to actually render the dialogue portion of a narrative. Right at the bottom, you will see this update the UI when dialogue starts or ends. And you will see it comes in and sets the current dialogue lines text there for the NPC and here for the player. So this is exactly where you will paste your typewriter plugin effect. Just instead of the set text, drag off and do your typewriter style effect. But we're not just going to leave it there ladies and gentlemen, let's create our own really basic typewriter effect. So I'm just going to come underneath all this and I'm going to add a custom event and I'm just going to call it render letter. So we need to add two variables to this render letter event. The first variable we're going to add is one called letters and this will be a type of string and then I'm going to turn it by clicking the little option to an array and this will turn it into an array. So this is going to be all of our text broken down into individual letters. The next input we need is an index and this will be a type of int and it will be a single and that will be which letter we're currently printing. So the first thing we want to do when we're coming from here is we need to check if we've actually got any letters to print. So I'm going to get the length of it and then I'm just going to drag off and say is less than and then I'm going to drag the index in. So I'm going to say is the index we're currently trying to print less than the length. If it is then we can print out the letter. Whereas if it isn't, we've done. We've basically got to the end of it. So we can add a branch in order to connect that up. Next, what we need to do is we actually need to set the current text. So I'm going to come up here where we print out the current and I'm just going to grab the current set text and clear dialogue line and I'm going to paste it in like so, just on the true. So what we need to now do is give it some text to actually print to the screen. So this is where we now build up and get the current letter that we need. So I'm going to drag from the letters here and I'm just going to do a get. And then from the get, we need to give it an index of which letter we want to render. So we already know that's our index here. And then from here, we now have the current letter that we need to render. So I'm going to drag off this and I'm just going to do an append. And I'm going to move this holding control to the B section. And in the A section, we basically want to get the current dialog line and we want to do get text so we can get what current text it has and then we can plug it into A. It will automatically convert it to a string. So what this is going to do is come in, get the current text of whatever we've rendered so far. So this might be no letters or, the, or a single letter and then it will append on our new letter to it like so. And then we can plug this into the set text which will convert it back to a text. After this, we just need to add a delay node into it and this delay is going to be how long it will wait before it prints out the next letter. So this is the key to the typewriter effect. So I'm just going to set my to something short like 0 0.01 and you can put more effort into this and make it balance itself based on how many characters and how long the audio is i'm just going for something super simple and then after this i'm going to get the index from all the way over here so i'm just going to drag it down here and i'm just going to do plus plus for increment in and i'm going to plug it into the connected i'm going to neaten up my index lines a little like so and then the final thing we have to do after we've incremented the in is we need to call the render letter function again 
And this time we'll pass in the index to the incremented in. And then the only other thing we need is the actual array of letters again. So I'm just going to drag this all the way down here and plug it in. And then I can come over and just like we did before, just neaten it up a little. There we are. So I'm just going to grab all of this and I'm just going to wrap it in a comment of render current letter typewriter effect. So this is a super basic way. And I do know the plugins will have a lot more time and customization options. This is super basic. And then all we do inside here is where we format the text to add the dialogue line to the speaker name. I'm just gonna remove the dialogue line like so. So we just render the speaker name and it'll set the text. And then after this, what we do is we, we drag from the current dialogue line text and we do to string because we need to convert the text to a string. So this is after the internationalization has already taken effect. And then from here, I'm gonna drag off and do get character array from string so this is going to turn all our text into individual array element and then from here we can just drag off and do render letter like so and then by default we'll pass in an index of zero like so so what this is going to now do is when we start rendering a dialogue npc line it will set the default text of the line to be the speaker's name so decryption and then it will break apart the dialogue line and start rendering each individual letter and now if we just come in and do the same for the player, just like so. So now you will see if I save and compile and try the game, you'll see as I run up to one of these people and start talking, it's each individual letter. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, how cool does that look? Nice and simple. And of course, it works on the player as well. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Nice, easy typewriter effect. Of course, you can come in and you can modify it as well. So you can say, after it's set the text, just play some audio to do the click, 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 click sound, in which all you'll do is just come down and say, play sound 2D, and then make it play a sound. Of course, the sound will have to be really short, Otherwise, it's going to mess up, but you can play with your delay in order to achieve the correct effect. Another thing you could do to improve it is you could just make the current dialogue lines text, instead of being center, be left aligned. So just select it, current dialogue line, and set the justification. And this will remove the effect of the center text growing. So you can see now if I run up to Hiroshi and play it, it'll start from the side and render it. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, and that is my first tip. The next common question I see quite often is when you run up and you have dialogue and it displays, is there any way for you to be able to change how it acts once you've selected dialogue? So if I come and select the bottom one, you will see the dialogue is still visible. All the other ones have gone, but it's grayed it out. And the question is, can you change that? And yes, you can. It's really easy to do. So if you just jump back into the narrative default UI and in the graph and inside the dialogue at the very top you have this select reply method. This method is what runs every time you select an option and it's running the UI tweaks for it. So the only thing this select reply needs to do in the end is call select dialogue option and then lock the UI and then finally set play reply. Everything else in the middle is just updating the UI so you can change it however you like. So the common question is can you make all the dialogue options disappear? Disappear, just like a game like Fallout where you select it, the options disappear, he says it, you don't need to see it again. And that's really easy to do. So all I'm going to do is instead of using these two targets here, which connect up to the dialogue option, I'm just going to unbind those two and I'm going to delete this branch here. Now that we've deleted the branch, we can connect up the set visibility and all this will do is loop through all of the replies on screen currently and make them invisible, which is what we want. And then from the completed, we can just plug this straight into the set is enabled like so. And then all we have to do is connect up the options into the targets like so. And now just with that small tweak, you will see that if we play the game and we run up to it, we can now select an option just like normal, but this time they will all disappear just like a game of Fallout. that we're going to look at is once you begin your dialogue and they speak just looking for a test of real american horsepower it will jump to the next dialogue option which is something commonly asked if you can stop that and instead have a button to skip and you can it's really easy to do so the first thing you need to do is if i find the dialogue that i want to modify so on my character rusty i'm just going to open his dialogue up i'm going to come up to the functions and i'm going to overwrite the get line duration all i'm going to do is set the return value to something ridiculously large so you can see if we run up to him again this time and he speaks new in town are just looking for a test of real american horsepower You'll notice that it will never skip his 
his dialogue because we've blocked it basically it's going to have to wait a ridiculous amount of time if, if we of course press enter it will get around this and we can select it but the player resist a chance to show you what this newcomer's got will do the exact same thing it will wait for you to press a key so all we have to do now is bind something to the enter key in order to change it so jumping back again to the narrative default ui so inside my designer this time i'm going to add the button where i want it to be so where i've got my current dialogue line i know it needs to be active at the same time as that so i'm going to come into my palette and i'm going to add a button just at the same level inside the dialogue ui and i'll call this btn skip text and then i'll just give it some text inside of it and i'll just call this and then with just a little bit of formatting i put it roughly in the right place and then you can of course format it way better than i have i've just added a quick button and then on this button i'm going to come and click it and i'm going to scroll all the way down and press the on clicked event then i'm going to come here and i'm going to cut it and i'm going to open up the dialogue graph here and i'm going to paste it in here because it deserves to be in here and then if you look down all of the functions you will eventually see one called handle enter key and all this does is if current UI is locked then it'll skip it. If it's not locked then it'll just wait because it's currently rendering something. So all we really have to do is make this button call handle event key. So if I come down here and do handle enter key that's it ladies and gentlemen that's all you need to do so if i come back now and play the game and run up to rusty you'll see the text shows i've got my button and i'll click next there we go and it jumps to the next part we should probably hide it when the player options visible so i will come down and say i'm here to my mark next 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 there we go so you can see there's probably some stuff we could fix about it what i'm going to do is i'm going to come up to the event on dialogue replies available this is what draws the actual players replies on screen i'm going to drag all of it across to the side of Little, just like so i'll drag this get as well just to neaten it up and then i'm going to come and find my button btn skip text and i'm just going to set the visibility to collapsed here because when it's displaying the player's options we don't need to see the next key and then what i'm going to do is copy these two nodes and then on the set reply and on the select reply here which is when we actually select the reply then i'm going to drag this all across and i'm going to paste it just just before it starts hiding the options and i'm just going to set it back to visible so this way it should disappear when the player is selecting an option but it should be available when you start typing text so you can see it's available to click and now it's disappeared i can't select anything and now it's back again perfect and you could go further with this and you could time the visibility of it to only show after the text is displayed which you could easily plug into the typewriter effect if you're using or you can just tune it into the dialog lines audio and get when it's finished something like the next common thing i see asked quite often is if narrative supports localization out of the box if you don't know what localization is it's translations does narrative support being written in english chinese japanese other languages and yes narrative it uses um reels text attributes so everything from dialogue to quest names is fully translatable and just to take a look at this if i come back to my rusty dialogue here and open it up and if i click on any of the dialogue nodes i've got you will see the text option up here has a little flag next to it and that's unreal's way of saying this is localization you can convert so what you can do to test this even more is if you come back to your main game and go to tools localization dashboard you will see it will pop up with this big screen and the first thing you want to do is come to gather from packages and tick it and then add an item into include path wildcard and this is basically where do you want to look in order to find all the text we need to translate so for me i've looked at where my dialogue is so back in my game here i put it in content blueprints dialogue and that's where i want it to look you can also put it into quests i wouldn't recommend putting it at content level because then it's going to scan every single thing across your entire game it can take a long time so if you only put the folders in you need you can do it really easily so back in here i've put contents blueprint dialogue and i've put a star at the end just to make sure it selects everything and then while we're here you could also just come in click the little three dots and i'm going to come to my content blueprints and quests and i'll also open all my quests file extensions should be populated by default and it's just what type of files it needs to look for since everything in unreal is typically a uasset or a umat they're pretty good starting ones and then all you do from down here is come and pick your native language so typically it will be english so make sure you tick the little button here and it will pop up with your box saying are you sure you want to make this your default language click yes and then you will see my word count has previously been generated but i'm going to come and click the gather text button and you'll see it'll pop up saying do you want to save yes and it'll now go off and gather the text now this can take some time because it's got to search every single asset and then scan every single thing inside the asset to see if it's translatable 
and there we go so mine's done you can see the little green tick is there so i can click ok and now you see my work can is shot up by 100. so what i can do is i can come across and you have these buttons here so you've got the edit button which is the one we're probably going to click in a moment and then you've got some other ones for importing and exporting scripts so i'm just going to click the edit translations to edit it directly in the editor and you can see here is every single dialogue in my entire game but also quests some stuff you're not going to want to change like the master quest here so i have a master quest asset which controls all other quests i don't need to translate that it's never displayed to the user so i can just ignore it but what you can do is you can come up and down and you can find different dialogue so for rust is it's well howdy there partner and you can see right here well howdy there partner is right there so if I was to come into my localization dashboard and start adding new cultures to here, so I will come in and add the Japanese language cut barrier there. I can click edit translations for this culture on that specific culture. And you will see I can now come in and I can choose its specific translations where I need to. The next tip that we're going to be looking at is always asked, can you use narrative on a game with multiple levels? And yes, you absolutely can. So narrative will store its progress per level. And what you need to do in order to translate that progress across to another level is to save and load at the correct times. So you can see I've currently got this map here where I've added a trigger that changes the level when you walk into it. And then I've got another map which does the exact same map as this, but it's just main two. So what I want to do is be able to talk to two of these people, jump across, and then not be able to talk to them again. Weird example, but it shows the idea. So you can currently, if I play this game now, and I run up to this guy Rusty and I talk to him, what you can see thing? I can't talk to him again because I've already talked to him. But if I come and change this level, you can see it's told me to talk to all four races again while it's compiling the shaders, so apologies for the lag. But if I run up to him, it starts again. It's like I've never done it in the first place. So this is really easy to fix. So the first thing I want to do is every time you're about to change the level, make sure you save. So narrative has a save function built in. So before I open the level, I'm going to come off and I'm going to get my narrative component. And you can do this anywhere. On a few of my games, I've done it every time I've completed an objective, which I will show you in a moment. But you can come in and then all we have to do is call save, like so. If you have an option to have multiple saves in your game, find a way to store the, the save name, such as a game instance or something. And now we've done this, all we need to do is tell narrative to load in the correct place. So what I'm going to do is come across to my main two map here, which again is the exact same map without the trigger in the middle. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I know whenever I want to come to this map, I want to reload narrative as soon as the map loads. So I'm going to use the map's blueprint to do this. So I'm going to open level blueprint. And then where the event begin play is, we delay for a little bit just to make sure narrative is ready. And then I play a quest. But before I play this quest, what I'm actually going to do is delete this from this map because that's a copy from the other one. And instead, I'm going to right click and do get narrative component. And I'm just going to tell it to load. And then because my save name is the same, that's fine. And now when we continue and save it, if I jump back to my other map now and proceed to do it, narrative will save, change level, load my progress and then allow me to continue meaning i shouldn't be able to talk to rusty so if i run up to him this time and i'll start to him and i'll talk all the way through there we go and i'll talk Let's to hitoshi as good. well there we go so i can't talk to these anymore and i've completed two out of four races if i now change level you can see i've still got to talk to two races and if i run up to rusty it won't let me continue and that ladies and gentlemen is how you change levels one last thing to mention i haven't personally used now one last thing to mention is i haven't personally used the levels or the layers functionality because I'm always using world partition but that works slightly differently to actually changing maps so that should remain in the same instance so while you're changing zones inside the level because you're not reloading the player the state should continue along and that ladies and gentlemen is my five most common questions about narrative and hopefully really easy fixes for you to crack on if you have any other tips please let me know below thank you for watching please like comment subscribe and I will see you next time